everyone. So now we are moving on to tissues. And last time we talked about cells. And so if you think about it, we're just sort of moving up the hierarchy, right? So we have, remember hierarchy means you have smaller things that come together to make bigger things. And so what is a tissue? So we talked about this on the very first day, the very first lecture. So a tissue is a group of cells with a particular function. Right, so we're gonna talk about different types of tissues. And the first thing I want to do is, is to introduce you to the idea of primary tissue types. So whenever you see the word primary, that means that I'm looking for one of these four categories. Now these are categories, which means they're not specific tissue types. The specific tissue types would fit into these categories based on their characteristics. Okay, so the four primary tissue types are muscle tissue, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, and nervous tissue. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to go through, we're going to look at the characteristics of those primary tissue types, and then you're going to fit in those specific tissue types to those primary tissue types. Okay, so I want to be very kind of explicit about what I'm looking for because there is a lot of information in these coming lectures and I want to give you some framework to understand it. So first of all, when we look at my lectures, I'm not gonna sit here and go through every single one of the specific tissue types that you need to know. And the reason I'm not doing that is because it's going to be kind of boring. So I want to instead give you some generalizations and some themes to look for so that you can create a context and framework for you to put the specific t um, information on. Okay, so that's my goal. I'm going to give you a framework of some generalizations and patterns to look for and then you can go back and learn and learn the specific detail. Okay, so this is what I'm looking for. So the first is for of those four primary tissue types, you need to know their general characterization, so general characteristics. So if I describe a tissue, you can characterize it for me or something like that. Um, the other thing is for each one of the specific tissue types and all of the specific tissue types that you do need to know are listed in your lab practicum one checklist. You'll need to know all of those specific ones. For each one of those, you'll need to know the full name and I'm very kind of a stickler on full names so make sure you're very careful with that. You'll need to know the general functions. And for my lecture today, I'm gonna to give you some generalizations, some sheets that'll help you with that, kind of structure that information for you. And then um, a location. And again, I'll go through some of the locations, but some of the, um, some of, for some of the tissue types, you'll need to look it up yourself. Okay, so when you're studying this kind of information where there's a lot of kind of individual data, you want to really think of it less like trivia and more like organizing it onto a framework. Come up with the main ideas first, which is what we're, I'm hoping to do together in the lecture, and then figure out how you can fit in the specific details onto that framework so that it's less overwhelming for you. Okay, another suggestion that I have is I found a lot of students find flashcards to be really helpful. You can make your own. There's, there are flashcards available online and there's ones through things like um, programs like Quizlet, that kind of thing. Okay, so repetition, repetition, repetition. Don't forget. Okay, let's start with epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues line body surfaces. Okay, and that is going to be huge for you because in lab, where you're trying to identify the tissues based on what they look like from a picture, if you see any kind of, if you see free surface, so empty space, if there it has to be an epithelial tissue lining it. So you can do process of elimination can't be the other ones, and now you have fewer choices to look at, and that's gonna be really helpful, okay? So really think about strategies for narrowing down your choices, and that'll help you arrive at the correct answer much more accurately and easier. 
Okay, so epithelial tissues, line body surfaces. Please note that when I say body surfaces, I not, don't mean just external surfaces, but also internal surfaces as well. Things like your respiratory tract, digestive tract, your urinary tract, all of those things. Anytime you have a surface where that's continuous with the outside, that's going to be aligned with the epithelial tissue, but also inside of your cavities. So for example, we talked about your parietal peritoneum that lines the inside of your abdominal cavity, that the serous membrane has an epithelial lining on the very outside of it. It's part of, it's the outside component of a serous membrane. Okay, so surfaces, epithelium. Surfaces, epithelium, connect it. Okay, let's talk about some characteristics. Okay, so first of all, when I see this, looking through the microscope, I see some free empty space. That means that I must be at a surface, and that means that this must be an epithelial tissue. Okay, that again, that's gonna help narrow my choices down. Now, epithelial tissues are polar. So let's talk about what I mean by epithelial tissues are polar. In chemistry, if a molecule is polar, that means it has a positive side and a negative side, okay? So what I mean by this is not about charge at all. It's about being different on one side than another. So the word polar actually just means different on one side than it is on the other side, okay? So if you're looking at this epithelial tissue right here, you'll see that on this side, we've got microvilli. Remember the, the little finger-like extensions on the surface, whereas this side, no microvilli. It's different. And so if I take this picture and I turn it upside down, it looks different. And that is one of the ways that you can see that it is an epithelial tissue because it has a top which we will now call the apical surface, apical like apex, like the top of a mountain, and the bottom, which we will now call the basal surface, okay, like base. So we have apical surface on the top, basal surface on the bottom. Okay, next piece, avascular. So let's go ahead and take a minute to talk about what that word means. So first of all, whenever you see, in the spelling science, whenever you see a word with an A at the beginning of it, that means that it's missing whatever comes after it. So for example, I could say that red blood cells are anucleated. It just means that they don't have a nucleus, okay? In this context, vascular means blood vessels. So epithelial tissues have no blood vessels, and that's because they are all cells. There is no non-living matrix, just solid cells. When you're looking at this epithelial tissue, see all of these dark circles? Those are the nuclei of the cells, and they're all packed together with no spaces and nothing in between. Okay, so that's actually very important because what, where do you find epithelial tissues? At a surface, right? So if they're found at a surface, they have to be a pretty good boundary and you wouldn't make a very good boundary if you had spaces in between. So you have tightly packed cells that hold on to each other nice and tight and that's an epithelial tissue. Okay, so no matrix, no blood vessels, and a difference in the top and bottom. Whew. So once you go look at the picture and you see your free space, you've now identified it as an epithelial tissue. The good news is, is from there, most of the epithelial tissues follow a very kind of specific naming scheme that you can just sort of follow. Okay, so all, almost all epithelial tissues have three words in them. The last word is going to be epithelium, okay? Let's look at the first word. For the first word, it's going to be the number of layers, and there's two choices. If there's only one single layer of cells, that's going to be simple. Nice and simple, easy peasy. Okay, so one single layer means simple. If there's anything else, two, three, four, five million, stratified. Okay, so simple one, two or more, stratified. Okay, so that's the first piece. 
The second piece is going to be come from the shape of the cell. Now there are three possibilities for this one. Okay, the first is squamous, also pronounced squamous. Okay, so again, pr for pronunciation, I really suggest that you say it how you want to spell it. Whatever makes you spell it correctly is good with me. Okay, so squamous or squamous, it just means really, really flat. Think of like a fried egg. Okay, so those are squamous cells, nice and flat. The next one is cuboidal, which sounds a lot like cube. Okay, so if you take a cube, like think of like a dice, and you cut it in half and get a little thin section, what shape are you gonna create? A square. Okay, so yes, this is, this is real life, and in real life, you're not gonna see perfectly square cells, that just doesn't happen. But if they're kind of roundish, like roundish looking squares, that's going to be cuboidal. And the third, the third option is columnar, and columnar means long columns. Okay, so long columns of cells, and you cut that, you get the section, you'll be more or less like a, uh, like a rectangle. Now, one thing that you should, one sort of tip for you is sometimes columnar can look a little bit like cuboidal depending on how long and skinny those cells are. So one tip for you is to look for the location of the nucleus. In the real tissues, the, the nucleus for the cuboidal cells tends to be right in the very, very center where you have about sort of equal amount of cytoplasm around the outside of it. Whereas for columnar, the, 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 nucleus, sorry, the nucleus tends to be towards the bottom. So you'll have a good amount of cytoplasm sort of stacked on top of the nucleus. Okay, so if you see a long kind of column of emptiness, that's columnar. Okay, so remember three pieces, number of layers, shape of the cell, and the last word is always epithelium. Don't forget the last word, epithelium. Or you could say epithelial tissue if you want to make it four words instead of three. Okay, so let's practice. So, looked at the picture. The first question you ask yourself is, do you see a surface? That's what I ask myself. And I do, because look here, here's some free empty space. And if there's free empty space, that tells me it must be a epithelium. Okay, so it's one of the epithelial tissues. So we know the third word. What was the first word? The first word has to do with the number of layers. Now for the number of layers, you want to look at the orientation of the nuclei. So see all of these dark, darker spots? Those are all nuclei. And is there one layer or lots of layers? The answer is lots of layers. Okay, so it starts right about here. And you, there's tons of them all stacked up on each other. So what's the word for lots of layers? Stratified. Okay, so first word of this name is stratified. Second, word, second part is going to be the shape. Now, it's very important. This is new information. Make sure you pay attention. I should have mentioned it earlier. For the shape, you always look at the shape of the cells at the apical surface, the top surface, not the basal surface, not the bottom, okay? You'll notice that the, at the bottom here, they're kind of square. So we're not looking at the cuboidal, that's not the answer. But at the top, they're really, really flat. What was the word for flat? Starts with an S, squamous. Okay, so if we put it all together, the first word was stratified, the second word was squamous, and the last word is always epithelium. Okay, or you can see epithelial tissues if you prefer. Epithelium is better. Fewer words. Okay, so let's look at this. Stratified, lots of them, squamous, flat, epithelium, a tissue that lines the surface with compact cells, no, no blood vessels, and it's polar, and there's no matrix as epithelium. So just as a reminder, full words, all three words, that will, is the full name of the tissue. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it and continue on with a new lecture piece in just a second.